you know, just hardcore, factual, more proof. There's so much proof out there that this is going on. But, of course, the mainstream media, you know, uh, playing dumb, uh, told not to talk about it. I do want to let him continue on for a second. But what he said, said there, I, I, I want to go back, actually. I want to go back and, and let you listen to that again. I hope you guys can, are hearing this. It looks like rain. Bring an umbrella. That said, what's going to rain down? This. Various uses of neuroscience and technology in intelligence, security, and defense operations. So, for example, if we take a look at the intelligence and surveillance space, our group has been very focused upon the capability of something called neurint, neurocognitive intelligence, which really represents not only assessing various neuropsychological factors that are operative in narratives of individual and group activities and the cognitions that underscore them, but also harnessing intelligence operators to brain machine interfacing systems so as to allow an increased capability through reciprocal dynamic robotics, whereby the system is doing certain things quite well, the human operator is doing things quite well, and they reciprocally learn from each other. Demonstrated shift in performance curves to the left, in other words, improvement in capability, has been demonstrated through some of these techniques. And the use of large-scale databasing that's able to present and engender certain patterns of salience to pull signal from noise has been very helpful in this. Is this a work in progress? Yes, absolutely. Is it in progress? Very absolutely. Mm-hmm. Is it in progress? Types of brain very absolutely. Approaches for forms of biotracking getting what's called neurological signatures or brain signatures okay i'm gonna go to another clip guys i, I was putting the i'm sorry i was putting the phone uh right next to the computer speaker um you know very low tech but i just want to get this information out you know, my nervous system is completely shot um you know my family is is really going through hell um you know because of this and i'm going through hell I know a lot of you guys are, but this information, guys, and especially non-TIs, this is an important resource for us targeted individuals, um, or if you want to call yourself a survivor, because we are survivors of this non-consensual human experimentation, this is very important. This is what we need to be showing if you have a psychiatrist or a doctor that you're talking to or a neurologist. We need to be showing them information like this that is just right in their face. The effects of this technology... They, they, they coincide and are parallel to what this man is talking about. Um, you know, and I think that people that give these talks, they do. They understand that non-consensual human experimentation, um, you know, is being run. Now, what non-TIs have to understand is you listen to this guy, and it's very important um, earlier in the video, and please, please especially non-TIs go and watch this because this is the centerpiece for why so many people are being experimented on. Now, there are a lot of other angles, I realize that, but the, the neuro uh, weaponization and control of people um, and what they can do neutralizing a person or, uh, you know, heightening their power uh, with this technology is central to why so much money is being put into it and why they are sacrificing individual citizens, individual citizens all around the world by all the military industrial complexes of those uh, different countries are sacrificing innocent citizens for this technology, for this kind of power, uh, and, and to learn more about this science, to learn more about the weapons, to advance the weapons more. I'm going to go to uh, the next clip, guys. Uh, sorry I had to do it in such a low-tech way, and I'm really going to, I'm almost, I'm kind of lighting a fire under my butt to, uh, to do it better and share my screen, but I just want to get the information across. And let's listen to this. Um, I know, I know that I'm, I, you know, videotaping a, another YouTube video. Y'all, y'all are probably like, why is he videotaping another YouTube video? But this is just so important, and I'm doing it because I'm telling everybody to go and watch this in its entirety. It's very important to understanding what's happening to his target individuals, um, and uh, and but that's why I'm, I'm showing these clips because it's just so important. I just, I really, uh, I really appreciate Dr. Horton and Ramola D and those guys at the Techno Crime Fighters Forum. This is, de this is serious detective work. They find great stuff. So I'd, I'd also like to promote, you know, Techno Crime Fighters Forum and, and Dr. Horton, which I had before. Uh, just great work, ladies. And I'm going to kind of, I'm going to move on here with another clip. Ourself in our eye as humanity and say we shall never employ science and technology 
for those means that may be destructive against others, irrespective of whether or not those individuals are aligned with our ideology and our beliefs. Yes, that would be. The reality of the situation poses itself as something quite different, however. And the problem we need to face is that certain prohibitions, if not frank proscriptions against using brain science in these potential ways, even defensively, may create an opportunistic window for others to be able to then pursue these approaches more vigilantly and more aggressively. It's a balancing act, folks. I'm not going to necessarily tell you how to resolve it because I don't know, and it becomes difficult. There are certain things we can do on the research side of the house to dial back who does the research, what type of research is done, and what it's used for. But this is a cat that's already out of the bag, and as I hope to demonstrate to you in a moment... This is a cat that is already out of the bag. So Listen to him, guys. It's a little late to start thinking about we're never going to use it like this and what happens if we do or we don't. What types of kind of neural weapons can we engage and develop? Well, I provide them for you. I don't want to go down into specific granularity to each one. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and stop this clip. And he also talks about neurotoxins and, and chemical weapons to affect um, uh, people's neural activity in the brain. Now, let's see. I'm gonna go to this clip right here. But that's very important. He says a lot of key phrases in this where you you realize that he understands that this experimentation is being carried out non consensually. And he actually says something, I think in one of these clips I have it, where he's like, you know, we've got to think about the ethical uh, implications of consensual or non-consensual. Um, like, almost, I mean, you know, I, I look at somebody like this and I'm like, you know, his brain uh, creates this, um, what's it called, like pushing that moral line and not even realizing that you're doing it. Because... What happens is these, uh, you know, these men, doctors and, you know, people at universities, uh, the intelligence agencies, uh, the contractors, the DOD, um, the CIA, the DIA, they, uh, you know, they think that this technology is so worthwhile and the control and the power is so much and that they're, you know, some of it, I think some of these people, like the people microwaving me, uh, you know, remote neural monitoring, remote neural manipulating me. Uh, you know, hitting my body, torturing my body with external hits, um, you know, doing all this stuff. You know, the lie is different at every level and the importance is different to these people at every level. And I, I really think that the people who are on my shift work, who are using the automated technology to destroy me and destroy my family um, and experiment on me, they're, they're being paid. So it is a money thing. But I think in their heads, um, you know, they feel like they are carrying out a mission of obligation and that other countries are going to be developing these weapons so that they have to too. That is no excuse for murdering innocent citizens and destroying innocent lives without their consent. Um, you know, so this is very, very serious, but these people feel like it is such a powerful uh, technology, um, such a powerful force that can be used to, uh, I, you know, and it's no excuse, um, but that's what I get the feeling, you know, what this guy is talking about, the power of it, and how every nation is is basically, you know, experimenting and developing these weapons. Um, and he's saying that it's important for us to to be ahead of them. You know, it's important for us to, to find out and advance this technology, advance these weapons, because other people who are bad are going to do it. And that creates this kind of cult-like justification for murder and for destroying lives. And that's what I get from my attackers. I have 24-hour day B2K and stuff like that. You know, I don't think they feel like they are like Satan worshippers. They think that the, the good that can come out of this, um, I, you know, I, uh, they feel like it's, it's justified. They sacrifice me and my family, um, which is absurd. It's cult-like and it's evil. But we need to understand some of the motivations of the people doing this to us. Um, a lot of them are satanic in nature, um, but you know they're coming from this place of like, well, we have to do this because the bad guys are doing it. This and this is an excuse. I'm just kind of explaining where I, I think that that my attackers, um, you know, the surveillance role play on the B2K, you know, how they do it to me, the protocols they follow for torture and the gang stalking, the psyop part of it, you know, it tells me that they, they really think that they're like, you know, doing something for their country, which is uh, incredibly, incredibly insane and very, very dangerous. When this guy talks about ethics, um, you know, I kind of want to throw up 
because I know that he knows that this is the unethical experimentation and non-consensual experimentation is being carried out. However, I do appreciate that he is trying to present ethical arguments. I mean, I think it's way, way too late and they've gone way, way too far, but maybe the general public will start listening to some of this and putting the pieces together, um, you know, of what's happening to us. But let me go ahead and play this clip, guys. And just, just watching it, there's so much important stuff. You know, the whole thing is just uh, bombshell, bombshell information. Translating research to operations, what do we use then? The idea of justification both in and for war, a just war and just conduct in the war. Or perhaps we need to explore yet another ethical principle that was also very well ex explicated under the Augustinian maxim, which is the idea of use contra bellum, which essentially means justification of use to prevent war. But how far do you go? To what extent? What represents benefit? What represents burden? What represents harm? I don't have answers, but what I can tell you is that this is certainly what we consider to be a science and technological superhighway. It, it's a super speedway. And I like that analogy for a lot of reasons, because it, it's true. There are multiple lanes of entry and multiple lanes of competition. There are a lot of vehicles that are being entertained there. It's a very rapid pace. There are hazards. There are certainly race rules, though not everybody obeys the race rules, and sometimes if you don't obey the rules, you get ahead of the pack. And of course, there are big... Problems. Okay, so what he just said um, is, is very, very important. You know, he's saying that uh, some people break the rules and they get ahead of the pack. So what he's saying is, like, I can, I can actually parallel it, um, you know, directly to experimentation being done on us targeted individuals. They're breaking the rules. They're breaking the rules and they're experimenting, non-consensually experimenting and torturing, killing people with this technology to advance the technology, to advance the weapons. And what he's saying here is he's saying that that... You know, uh, you can get ahead in the science. You can get ahead of other countries or whatever um, by breaking the rules. But is it ethical? You know, he's asking quite, and it really, you know, I, I kind of, I agree with Dr. Horton, uh, but I think that we should try and contact uh, Dr. James uh, Giordano and ask him if he knows about this. If he knows that that you know, targeted individuals are out there, they're being experimented on by neurotechnology to advance these weapons and this technology. Um, it'd be interesting to see what he says. Um, he seems, I don't know, it, you know, these people who are very, very intelligent and, um, you know, doctors and uh, some of the people in, in neuroscience, you know, they seem to, you know, trick themselves into, like, asking ethical questions already when, when uh, you know, it's completely, completely immoral use of the weapons are already happening. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's just outright lying, uh, but it even confuses me sometimes. And I'm like, do these people really understand what's happening? Um, you know, are they, are they trying to create an ethical argument maybe to help us out and to help these, these weapons be used in a more ethical manner? I really don't know, guys, but I, I'm kind of uh, leaning on the side of what Dr. Horton was. That this guy is culpable. Um, if he knows about this stuff and he knows that it's being used for non-consensual experimentation on, on us, you know, as, as survivors of this um, and being tortured all the time, I mean, it's, it's incredible. You know, I'm going through this information of what this man is putting out and asking ethical questions about. I'm being attacked by this weaponry at the same moment where he's saying, well, should we do it? You know, we can do all these great things, but should, we should ask ourselves... You know, what, what are the moral implications? What are the ethical implications? You know, what, what is consensual and non-consensual? And I'm like sitting here making a video about it. My nervous system, you know, my body is so tired and my brain has been attacked by microwave pulses, remote neural manipulation and all that jazz for so long that I can barely think and my body is so tired. It is uh, a, an awful evil irony. Um, of what, you know, how this guy is, is presenting all this. And, you know, the thing is that, you know, if these people do understand that this is being used non-consensually on, on innocent citizens, they can't come out and say it. Well, right now we're, you know, we're experimenting and we're kind of cutting corners. We're kind of, um, you know, but we're getting ahead of the pack. You know, we're, we're uh, completely breaking the rules and murdering a bunch of innocent people and torturing them their whole lives, but we're getting ahead in the science. You know, he could not, uh, you know, he couldn't say that. So, um, y'all can hear me 
getting pissed off right now. So I'm just gonna, I wanna go a little bit further into this clip and then I have one last one. Uh, and I think I'll go to 45 minutes. I hope y'all can hear.